ray or a shark. It's can't allow to understand them all, but that's what we find just the centre. And it's quite small. Right, well this is a bivalve, big tenostrum, but they're big like um, bivalves that live in this mud and actually on the outside of them they've got these big long sort of nodes for like spurs that come off of them. We find those at this level quite commonly. Plus another rave over. Oh, we are. Find this. Yeah, hold your hand, eh? This is the baby you need to be in, I think. Right, so what have we got up here? So you see it's a bit more sort of clay, but... Worth a look, you just never know. It's, it's, uh, you know, again, you look here and you think, oh, that's just a bit of a pebble, but it's not, it's another bivalve, but it's, it's in situ. Well, you come here, you know, and you could sort of walk here, and there'd be a vertebra, big vertebra stuck here. Yeah, here, here. where the hell does that come from, you know? It's just amazing, really. Right, let's cross over. Everyone ignores it, but you know, for trace fossils, it's brilliant. Look, dum 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 dum. Tell me, um, and get some. I see some cross it. No, I think they're really good. Um, I say everyone's everyone's ignored them, but and no one's really sort of studied them. Another bivalve called Tragonia costata.
it's loaded with, with ammonites. So I mean, you can see the oh, it's all bigger ones just now. I ain't got the really big enough trout, but you know what I mean? There you are, there's a... City. Full of ammonites. And, yeah. Keep bivalves in. In fact, it's, it's more interesting looking through this. Ah, oh, there's another one. Um, Lingia. That's still alive today, that is. Evolved over four and a million years ago. You go to Westbrook like this, and you used to go through and get really good ammonites, you know what I mean? And if you had a, had a good one, you could actually dry it and keep it. You don't get this is weathered a bit, that's hence the mudstone starting to crack up anyway. But it'd be real blocky underneath. I love it. In that space you've got bivalves, oysters, ammonites. It's fossil rich, it really is. Bivalves, that's just the mudstone cast of a thing called Tracia. But both valves, you can see that. Okay. Trigonia costata. So these are, again, bivalves. There's one, you can see it's a bivalve, two shells, it's open. Got that? Um, and they, we know it's a costata because it's got these straight, straight lines across, the same as this one. It's quite a nice one. And then this one, Trigonia, or Maya Ferrella, Trigonia clavellata. You see it's different. So look at that. Look at that. You can see these have got little nodes on and they've got ridges. So that's the difference. We've got two, two of those. Um, again, oysters, Nana Jaira, Nana. One on top of each other. Ray vertebra, cartilaginous fish, and this is what remains of these things. The most common find we'll find we found today here. This is the best find of all. <laughs> the small little tiny ammonite, 3D ammonite you can see. Can you see that? Hang on. God, it's so small. You'd have to magnify that. And then this is part of a wing phalanx, a wing bone, of a flying reptile called Ramphorhynchus. We know it's the Ramphorhynchus because it's got that distinct groove running down there. It's sort of triangle. Now you can see the the bones were hollow. They've been filled with calcite. You can see that hollow thin wall bone. So that's flying reptile. A little bit of lobster. We do find lobsters, complete lobsters, but they're just bits of the claw. So for a, I don't know, four hours four or five hours looking including our lunch this is what you can find for a sort of a normal day out on a muddy beach down near Weymouth